This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Plan on paying less for the coverage you need with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote today at FBHP.com. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and this is Calvin Ridley, wide receiver, Tennessee Titan. <laughs> yes, sir. Welcome. Thank you. I like saying that. <laughs> Calvin Ridley, wide receiver, Tennessee Titans. Ooh, that does sound good. It does sound mm-hmm. good. It does. It works. It does. Calvin Ridley, wide receiver, Tennessee Titans. That's it. Yeah, wow. it's nice. Yeah. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah. The news of your agreeing to the deal mm-hmm. surprised a lot of people on Wednesday. Yeah. I know you weren't surprised because you're in on it. You're talking to your agent. But in terms of the Titans being in the running for your services, were they in it all along or did they pop in and win at the end? I honestly asked for them, for my agent. I said, what's up with the Titans? I kind of said that. And then they really were in, I think, from him telling me. You know, I don't even talk to my agent to tell them. But when I had, uh, after the season, I gave him a list and I put the Titans in there. And um, he, he, they were interested in me also. So, thank God. All right, so <laughs> why were the Titans on your list? Um, uh, when I got out of the season, I knew I was probably going to be a free agent. I was just looking around, you know, at, you know, all the, you know, potential spots I can go and, you know, just the rosters and everything and quarterbacks. And, uh, I don't know. I just was like, you know, I looked at Tennessee with my brothers and we looked at the, you know, the game, uh, like a game or two and we looked at Will and we, you know, we looked at the receivers and we were like, you know, could be a potential spot for us. So let's put them on the list and, you know. It's kind of was at that point from there, but uh, no, nah, but uh, what I really was thinking was, you know, I think I could come over there and help them. I think I could come over there and they'll give me the ball. <laughs> that's, I mean, honestly, that's kind of how I was looking at it. And, uh, and I know teams are always making their team better all the time. So it's like, um, who knows how good we're going to be. Was one of the things that impacted that decision the fact that there is an opportunity for you to get a lot of playing time and yeah. the opportunity for you to make those plays that you want to be making? That that was that had a lot to do with it. It had a lot to do with it because I was like, you know, man, I want I want I want to show these people, you know, not even only that, but I I like to get the ball. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I yeah. do. I want to be someone they look at. It's like, all right, we want to get him the ball, and uh, all the time, and he can he can definitely help us, especially like in the red zone. You know, a lot of areas I can score touchdowns. I just wanted to put myself in a position where I can, you know, you know, get the respect. And, you know, obviously from my work ethic and me putting in the work and going on the field and doing what I got to do. But at the end of the year, I, w- I wanted to, you know, my team to be in a good, successful spot winning wise. And, you know, I had a, 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 you know, I had something to do with that. I know DeAndre Hopkins is someone who you are familiar with. You guys know each other. Um, how much did his presence on this team impact your decision and his skill set? It's got to be complementary to what you're doing, yeah, correct? Yeah, no doubt. Um, Obviously, when I was looking at it, I didn't want to be by myself because then I, you just you can get taken out of the game and doubled and other things. So, yeah, obviously, uh, when I was getting to the point where I was like, all right, there's three teams I want to go to now. Uh, I was just breaking it down. I was like, yeah, D-Hop's over there. You know, it could work. It could work. It's not that many. A lot, a lot of people. You know, Jaguars just in my fate. Uh, Jaguars had just got Gabe Davis. I was like, yeah, there's going to be a lot of us over there. I was like... All right, no brainer with right now where I'm going right now. Tennessee's looking really good for me because, like I said, I like to get the ball. You know, I want to, you know, I want to help my team, and I want to be one of the guys the coach is looking at. Like that guy's gonna help us. You know what I'm saying? So once they did that, I went to thinking. I was like, hmm. They already both teams are offering good money. I'm not, you know, doing it for the money. I'm doing it to the, 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 you know, to be good and you know, be comfortable somewhere. So I was like. Tennessee is, 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 is looking good for me over there, I think. I just took it. I was like, you know, they're going to use me. They, they want me there. I know Nick. Nick just came from Jacksonville, so I was like, man. Nick Holt, yeah, offensive Nick Holt, coordinator. Offensive coordinator. I mean, what am I doing? I mean, Nick's over there. I, mean, I have a good relationship with Nick. We could talk, and it's just, I was like, Will. And like I said, I, I want to, I could see me and Will and Adiha, all of us, we just got to get together talking. We could, you know, we could be really good. So. Mike mentioned earlier all the swirling media wondering where you're going to go, what you're going to do. Yeah. Are you surprised by how few people really understand how many elements go into this? I mean, you're considering a wide range of things when you're deciding what team to play for. Yeah, it's a, 
Yeah, this was, a, it was really cool, honestly. Like, you're talking about free agency mm -hmm. and all that. That was the first time I did it. I thought it was really cool. It was really, it was a lot of emotions in it, but it was um, really cool because you, you're like in control of where you go, kind of. And, you know, they're, they're sending offers in. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's a lot of emotion because, you, you know, you don't know what city. You got kids now. You don't know where you're going to live. It's just like a lot of emotions, but it's a very, very cool process. And I think a lot of people should, you know, be able to go through that because it was something different that I never went through. And I was excited the whole time, pretty much. Fort Lauderdale guy. Yeah. Coconut Creek High School? Yes. Oh, no, 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 no. Monarch High School. Monarch High School. Monarch High School. It's in Coconut Creek. It's in Coconut Creek. Yeah. Um, was free agency similar to being <laughs> recruited coming out of high school as a five star? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you know, you can't talk. To, they only could talk to your agent. But it's kind of like that, yeah. Once you, obviously, once you get, you, you just don't get the information from them. You get it from your agent. So it's kind of, it is kind of like. Not calling you at home. Yeah, they're not calling me at home. The day. Or they're not calling my mom or, you know, my, you know. Well, speaking of you being young, do you remember your pre draft visit here in 2018? I will never forget it. You know why? Because I got a ticket leaving here. Actually. You got a ticket? You <laughs> did? Yeah. I actually was driving because, you know, like, my wife's from Huntsville. So no, I was just driving. That's great. Yeah. You know, there are I, a lot of Titans fans in Huntsville. Yeah, really? Yeah. Awesome, Dan. We, 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 well, that's where we live. <laughs> so I was coming, I drove from Huntsville up, did my visit. It went pretty well. Drove back on the way down. I got pulled over. <laughs> I got a ticket, so I'll never forget. How fast? I was in uh, like 70 something. Okay, 80 well, something. That's not okay. Yeah. I remember <laughs> your visit here because we did an interview. We did. We did. Okay. We did. probably did. Let's check it out. No way. Calvin Ridley, wide receiver, <laughs> Alabama. They say that Man, you're the that number one wide receiver prospect <laughs> in this good. draft. When you hear that, what do you think? I think, yeah, I am. Uh, I definitely think I put in the work and I definitely deserve it. And uh, I mean, I go to, I, I play for Alabama. I had, you know, three great seasons and uh, we won a lot. And I definitely oh, do goodness. think I am the best receiver in the draft. Don't you have to? If you're going to be an elite receiver, don't you have to feel that way? Yeah, I mean, I definitely have a lot of respect for all the other guys that are in the draft, but I just think I am the better receiver in the draft, and I do have to have some type of confidence in myself that, you know, or the teams wouldn't want me. So, yes, I do. <laughs> I am the best receiver. I love the this video. The people that talk about your game go on and on about several parts, but I want to ask you about one thing specifically, your route running. You're said to be yeah, one of the best route runners to come remember. out of college uh -huh. in years. How did you get so good at that, and, and how have you perfected all of uh, it? I think just by watching other guys and uh, trying new things and going out there and doing it in practice. And uh, I'm the type of guy who's, uh, I can watch film on Amari Cooper or Julio uh, AB and, uh, do what they're doing, mock it on the field. And I think I try to do that. And I just try to find ways to get open, hide behind guys, get in front of guys, and just different things that help work. And, and I mean, some of the best guys probably do the same thing. And I'm just I'm going to take it from deal. them and just become wow. my own best, you know. Who do you model your game after? Uh, I think I'm Calvin, really, uh, to be honest. But I, I, I do have a couple of uh, guys that I do like. And I like, like I said, A.B., Antonio Brown, Amari Cooper. Emmanuel Sanders, Julio Jones. It's a lot of other guys, but I think those four are the ones I watch before <laughs> I watch else. What <laughs> pieces do you take from their game, or have you taken from their game? Yeah, uh, like a guy like A.B., man, he just gets open. He's known to get open no matter what. So I, I try to, like, see how, what does he do and, like, like is he, what is he doing to get open so easily? And Coop, he's just like a technician. He's like a real, I think he's a real route runner. He's really good. And uh, Julio, I feel the same way about him. He's just an overall beast. And I just want to like figure some things out he's doing. And Emmanuel, he's a great route runner as well. He's very, you know, got, like technique, like Mamari. He sells everything really good. And I, Damn, I like him. A lot. I didn't know I was you talking about You know the like reason that. I like Alabama receivers yeah. so much? <laughs> I was decent. Because I mean, the this Alabama is a solid interview. It is. Play against <laughs> the practice. Oh, yeah. You, you have seen NFL defensive backs already, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Yes, I have. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> Every day in practice. What have you learned going against Minka Fitzpatrick and, and guys of that ilk over your time there? Oh, uh, man, that I got to bring it every day in practice in order for me to, you know, to keep my position and for me to feel comfortable about myself. Uh, you know, and I feel really good about that, that knowing and going to practice that I'm going to get the best work. You know, I got 
Anthony Everett, Levi Wallace, Mika Fitzpatrick, Ronnie Harrison, and just a bunch of guys in the secondary who are going to test me every day to, to get better. I'm going to test them as well. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's really good. It helps me in the games. Tell me something about Calvin Ridley. Not the football player. We know that. Tell me something about Calvin Ridley we ought to know. Um, I'm a real cool guy. I mean, real cool. I like to hang out, chill. I really like to laugh all the time. I mean, <laughs> when you're funny, I'm going to laugh. It's funny, I'm going to laugh. That's one thing about me. I mean, I like to laugh. I'm going to laugh. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah, it is. I oh. love to laugh. I, I like to have fun. I want to smile. I mean, I want to crack jokes all the time. I just want to have fun. I'm the type of guy I want to have fun. Yeah. When you answer the phone on April the 26th and that team says, you're our guy, what's going to go through your mind? To be real honest, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the feeling I got right now is like, Every day the drive gets closer, it gets, I get this little feeling inside, and it's like, man, so I honestly don't know. I mean, I'm going to say <laughs> I'm thank you, and I, I can't wait to be there, obviously, but I really don't know how I'm going to feel or what I really am going to say. I'm just going to be, it's probably going to be so much. I don't know. Who is the person in your life you're going to be happiest for at that moment? My mom, because I'll be able to, I mean, she'll be able to do things that she you know, she can be able to get a house. She can get a nice car. Just to be able to see her smile and make her feel better and know that she uh, she raised a great son and he, he's going to take care of her now. And, uh, <laughs> you know, my mom, really, I want her to be very proud. That almost made me cry. Did it really? Did it? Yeah, I was about to say turn that off. <laughs> that part right there, yeah, it's good, though. That's Why, all right. Yeah. Why'd that make you so emotional? I don't want to talk about it. I just, I just don't want to cry. Yeah. <laughs> Is it? I don't know. It's a good. It's really good. You've lived a lot of life in yeah. the six years since. Yeah, there. you know what I'm saying. And you don't have braces anymore, but your teeth are perfect. Yeah. Well done. It really Man, worked. Man, though, it's like, dang. That's a you good know one. that guy? I do. I do. That's a really a good guy right there. That's a really good guy right there. What would you tell that guy dang. that would help him for the next six years to? Make him better or maybe not make certain mistakes or whatever. I always think that's interesting because we don't get to show those to guys very often. At that time, we did them with everybody who would take visits. And the only way they aired is if we picked the player. So nobody's ever seen that. So what would you tell that guy? I'll tell that guy, you're the coolest person in the world. <laughs> For real. Uh, I don't know. It's good, though. I mean, that's good stuff. You were a first-round pick, and it turned out to be a very good thing. Got to take care of mom. And here you are in the NFL, and you're a Tennessee Titan now after being a free agent, and you've got a contract that is obviously very special, and you've earned it. You've got to be proud of this moment. We're so happy you're here. Didn't mean to, <laughs> didn't mean to hit you that way, just thought it'd be fun to take a look at it. You have no idea how happy we are to have you here, Calvin Ridley. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Seat Geek is now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. Whether you're buying tickets to Titans games or any live event in Nashville, Seat Geek is the place to do it. Seat Geek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. So, Titans fans can fan. He's a good guy. He's a great guy. We we're just talking. Um, I remember watching that video, which I had I had never seen it. Oh, I had never seen that because, yeah. as we said. Um, we didn't, so we did all these interviews. I mean, we've got interviews with guys. With half the NFL, right. it feels like. <laughs> the Jameis Winstons and people, all these people who have come in on in-person visits, we used to do that. And they would not see the light of day unless uh, those people were picked by the Titans. Right. And it, it's kind of an awesome thing to go back and watch it. But I just forgot how much I genuinely liked him. Because the people I always like the best in those settings are the people who, they're just real. They're, they're just real people, and 
you know, what he talked about was real and it was just, it was just very cool. Well, in those situations, our evaluations of someone is very different than a scout's evaluation of someone. You know, those pre-draft visits were all part of the process and we talk to them in a very different way than the conversations they have with the football people. And how they talk to us. Exactly. Before the interview starts. Yeah. It's like I had a Band-Aid on my nose, in the middle of my nose. You sure did. In that interview. Yep. And the reason I did is I was picking up some equipment underneath the stairs, and I turned around and hit a metal, what would you call it? Uh, like a. It's like a support beam. A support beam. I yeah. hit the metal beam, and I knocked myself out. Yeah. And I was cut straight across here. Yeah. And I bled like crazy. Yeah, that was a bad sequence. There. And so in that instance, I guess I did that interview because you weren't here. You mm -hmm. were probably off shooting an interview somewhere else or working on some other feature. Yeah. Yeah. There was something going on that day where you and I were dividing and conquering. Yeah. And who knows you did. what it was. Yeah, you, it was 2018. You knocked yourself out and still went on. And he didn't say anything, didn't even bump on the fact that you had a Band-Aid on your nose. It was a bad look. Yeah. It was a bad Not But again... Cute. We didn't know if it would ever air, so I, I mean, you it know. It didn't really matter it didn't that matter. much because you have a one in however many chance. Of a one in, at, at that time, the majority of the guys they brought in were all first or second round picks. Like earlier that week, Harold Landry had been in. Yep. And he was a second round pick as it turned out, but people thought he was going to be a first round pick. Yeah. So none of these interviews hit you know aired it's like we're talking about Jameis Winston mm -hmm. and what a different opinion we had of Jameis Winston until he came in right 100 percent and we all thought he was fantastic he was when bear you, hugging everybody well when you meet him yeah. in person you get it very endearing. that's the whole thing you get you it's not the crab claws and the whole whatever <laughs> else was going on it was, and, and that's why he's still in the league, mm -hmm. and that's why teams want him around, because he has that sort of, that sort of positive influence. Yeah. Now I'm just happy that we <laughs> we did those because we have those um, to go back to every now and then. All throughout the course of a season, right. we will be referencing those kind of catalogs that we've created for ourselves of these interviews that we've done with people, but very, very rarely do we get to pull them up and use them in the way that we were able to with Calvin Ridley. That was really special. That was fun. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of fun. All right, let's hit a few other things through the course of this week. Yeah. First of all, Tajay Spears is no longer number 32. He's number two. Mm. Like or no? The, I, I'm still struggling with the single digits. I know it's old news, but it, I... I I don't love the way it looks, but at least it's one of his number. He can go with something love, strange. Love, I love, know you love, love it so hard. Love. Aesthetically, it just it oh. doesn't compute in my brain. And, I don't like the way it looks. And 32 is a great number. 32 but, is a great number. But two as a back, oh. Mike. So wonderful. Aesthetically, it bugs. My brain can't, I can't get there. I know it's old news. This is not a new thing the league has done. I'll like it in 10 years, probably. Maybe. Maybe. Tony we'll, Pollard? We'll see. What about Tony Pollard and and Tajay Spears together? I like that right now. That is something I like right this second. I think that's a phenomenal group. Tony Pollard was someone that as soon as free agency started, I said, that guy. He's He was 20 in Dallas. 20 is open right now. It's great. 20 But he has not been assigned phenomenal. a number. Yeah. As we record this, nobody has officially been assigned a number yet. But uh, the double digits, Tony. 20. Do it, man. 20 uh, is great. All right, second thing. Nick Folk back as the Titans kicker. Like that? Love. Yeah? We missed one kick last year. Yeah. Outside 50 yards. Consistency. And he did fine on the kickoffs. I'm telling you, kickers are like oxygen. You don't know you need them until you've... Well, it's kind of shoddy. We've and then, kind of been... Yeah. All over the road. I mean, we went through a couple years of bad. Yeah. And then went through a couple years of okay. And, and now, he And he did a great job. Consistency is key. I love it. Uncle Nick, <laughs> he'll be 40 during the season next year. We'll throw a party. All right. Uh, Cheeto Awuzi is fun. Yes. Really fun. And more importantly, he can really play. 
yes, he can play. He, I mean, he's been someone who throughout his NFL career has performed consistently, there's that word again, all the way through, no matter where he is, he is a good performing player. And so I'm excited to have him with the Titans. I'm excited to see what he's going to be able to do in a defense that has the potential to look a little bit different um, than what we've seen in the past. And I'm just really fired up about that. And I like that he understands that he has a name that's hard to say. And he's very patient about well, that. Well, and okay, so I didn't look good in that OTP. See, I don't it didn't think come you across, bad, Mike. It didn't come across well that it's Awu Yi. It's a lot better. Thank you. Have you been but practicing? But I don't think I'm going to say it like that on radio and television. I don't and, think and, you'll be able to. I don't think I will either. Um, and then I've gone back and done some research about how other people have said it. It's just so dramatic a, a pronunciation. I think a woozy, the Americanization of it, which he says is fine. Right. I think it's much easier to say in the speed of a game. And I think that I really appreciate that he gives you an out with that. He says, in my language, this is how it's said. Mm -hmm. In the American English, this is how it's said. This is cool because I understand. But how do you think he says it when he walks into a room, puts out his hand and says, hi, I'm Cheeto. I'm guessing it depends on the room. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. But I'm saying if he's just meeting us. Uh, he probably says. A woozy. A woozy. Yeah. Yeah. Just recognizing. But I'm situation. really torn because I, tr I try to get guys' names the way they want them. It's funny. And I know that that bugs when you don't get it right. It bothers me because like. Another of the pre-draft interviews we did a couple years ago was Kenneth Walker, who's originally from Memphis, played at Wake Forest in Michigan State. Now he's with Seattle. Titans had him in for a pre-draft visit, so we did the interview. When he walked into the room, I extended my hand, and I said, good to see you. I said, do you prefer Ken or Kenny, or do you prefer Kenneth? He's like, oh, it doesn't matter. I said, no, no, it matters. I said, you are going to be in the National Football League. You will have reached the highest level of this sport. You've earned this. So whatever you want to be called, you tell me. He goes, I'd like to be called Ken. I was like, good for you. Great, yeah. Ken. Well, I mean, I think, yeah. it, I think that's great because I think you, I think you earn that right. Mm -hmm. And I think you want to call people what they want to be called. Yes. But Ken or Kenneth Walker is a lot different from Cheeto Awuzi <laughs> or Awuzi. <laughs> if you're going fast. Yeah, if because, you're going Because, I mean, on the fast, radio, you're going fast. And you're saying words that are not... And this is hard to describe. I might sound very silly saying it. But football words are... There's a lot of, like, harsh consonant words in the things that you're saying and the words that you're using to describe. There's not a lot of flowing language when you're talking about football. And it's loud and you're projecting. And the way your mouth moves to do that, it would be hard to go from football words that are harsh and direct to a very flowing kind of delicate language. It's all in the way you move your mouth as a broadcaster. Wow. I know that was a bizarre I'm moving thing. on. I'm sorry. That's okay. No, but I, I mean, I think you're right. I think it's real. I mean, that, well, it's and that's two why, different and languages that's why I'm sharing with the OT people. Together. That's why I'm sharing with the OT people because it is real. I was trying to justify you it. You did. And now I feel like I no, sounded No, silly. no, no. I just, how you said it was just so much fun. Especially after you told me to mind my business yesterday in the interview with Kenneth. No, I said I didn't have Murray. time for you, is what I said. Well, I think you could do whatever you needed to do. You didn't have time for me. I didn't have time for you. Have you gotten any harsh judgment about that from anyone? No. People, I think people genuinely understood that Butt out, Mike. we needed to continue on. That Listen, you and Kenneth Murray were having a moment? How many people do you speak to in the National Football League where they're like, yeah, I went scuba diving last Tuesday, and you're like, oh, sure you did. Like, that's a conversation I've never had with a human before. I'm from Missouri. It's not like there's water there. You would like the so, Ozarks? Yeah, you're not scuba diving unless you, you want to see some stuff that you probably don't want to see in that lake. Uh, it's nasty. Um, people don't scuba dive in the lake, so I don't interact with scuba divers ever. Oh, that's ever. great. So now she's the spokesperson for Explore Missouri. 
No. Show me Missouri. You don't want to, not as a scuba diver, like <laughs> walk through a cave. All or right, something. moving on. Lloyd Cushenberry's big. He is big. Wow. Did you know he was that big? Yes. Even I think coming I out read of LSU, because there were some people who thought he was certainly going to be a guard. And there was one of the reasons that they liked him so much as a prospect across the board is that he could really play anywhere. I mean, he's tackle size. Uh, and that's the, the anchor in the middle that he's going to give them and what he's going to mean to Peter Skaronsky on the left and whomever ends up being the right guard. I mean, it's a, it's a big deal. Well, him just talking about his arm size, and I had never really thought about it, but as a center, you don't usually see people with arms that are that right. big and wow the advantage that it gives him in so many different ways just from a leverage perspective well wow. a lot of centers are really stocky guys mm -hmm. the 6'1 6 6 300 I mean there are people who weigh 315 mm -hmm. but there aren't people who are big like this I mean when he walked in the room you thought tackle because yep. of the arms and the just the way he's the built. way he's built yep. I mean he is I mean, it's like we call Jeffrey Simmons Big Jeff. He's big like that as an offensive lineman. I like it. Yeah, same. I think it's great. Uh, Kenneth Murray, your scuba diving friend. He's great. Mm -hmm. Not hired to be Aziz Alshire in this defense. I think there is some feeling among people that he's supposed to be the guy running the defense. I think what they want him doing is just running. Yeah, yeah. I and I, disrupting. I got the feeling that he was brought in to be disruptive is a great word. That force. He is there to get after the quarterback, get after the football. I, I wreak havoc is what I kind of feel like is more going to be his role. Not so much the orchestrating of the defense as a unit. Just get in people's way, man. Nick Westbrook Akine is back. It's very exciting. He's a uh, I mean, he's been such a consistent person within this offense to where no matter what his role is he's able to just step in and do what's asked of him he's a gritty guy you know he doesn't mind doing whatever he needs to be if that's starting in a game great if that's coming in as a rotational guy also great if that I mean we've seen him do so many different things over the years he's familiar with this organization familiar with the receivers room kind of where they've come from where they're going I think that's a great choice just as a stabilizer for that unit. Well, he's not there to take snaps away from Calvin Ridley or DeAndre Hopkins. No. He's there when those guys need a rest because he can play all three positions. He's there because he can be up on game day. He can be, I mean, he's really signed to be part of your 48 mm -hmm. because he can be up on game day due to the fact that he can fill all the receiving spots. He can be a core special teams player, which makes him part of the 48. If you need him to go play, if somebody gets hurt, he can. He, he can play and be effective. He has certainly done that. I mean, that's what good NFL rosters are made up of, are, are not just the great players and the highest paid players. It's the good, solid football players who can help you across the board. That ends up being the foundation of your team is those players. Right. And so, yeah, I, I think that having him remain as a part of this team is good for the Tennessee Titans. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is he's being signed to help you on Sundays mm -hmm. in whatever way that is. And honestly, if you have a team full of Calvin Ridley's, what you end up with is chaos. Well, you, I mean, you have the... You can, not everyone can be that guy. Right. There's just not... There's one football. Not everyone can be the man. Well, and what did Calvin Ridley just tell us? Yeah. I want the ball. Yeah. Nick westbrook Akine is not going to say that. He's going to say, if I'm open and I need to get the ball, I'd like to have the ball. Sure, I'm a receiver. Yeah. But they're, they're different strategies. I want Calvin Ridley to say, I want the ball. Right. I want DeAndre Hopkins to say, I want the ball. If you don't have players like that, you don't win. Right. But if all the players are like that, well, sometimes you also don't Then win. nobody blocks and yeah. nobody tackles and it's a problem. Right. You need the blocking and tackling people. Too. Okay. So as we wrap up, Texans have made a trade with Minnesota. Texans have sent their number one pick at number 23 to Minnesota for pick number 42 and then an exchange of some picks. And then the Texans get... Minnesota's number two pick next year. 
Hmm. So the Texans are out of the first round, but they have two second round picks and they have an extra second next year. And now Minnesota has 11 and 23. Interesting. So what are they going to do with 11 and 23? Most people think they're going to package them and go up to get one of the top quarterbacks. Daniel Jeremiah says this morning that he is hearing right now from his NFL sources four of the six picks in the draft, which begins on April the 25th, will be quarterbacks. And that Minnesota will likely move up. They'll take 11 and 23 and package it to go up and get Drake May from North Carolina. It's, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Oh, but what's really exciting is if four quarterbacks go. Who is left on the board? Well, that's fantastic. What does that Mm -hmm. move closer to Tennessee? Yeah. Because with the Chargers trading Keenan Allen to the Bears, the Chargers need a wide receiver. You would have to figure at number five, they're going to take a wide receiver. Yeah, you would think. Mm -hmm. So then, I mean, if we know one picks a receiver and we think four of the first six are quarterbacks, then what does that move towards the Titans? That's the interesting thing about where the Titans are picking is even though the Titans aren't in the market for a quarterback, You've got to pay attention to the whole quarterback dance because it impacts who remains on the boards and then are pushed down so much that you have to, A, you have to want something like that to happen because that's incredible. Um, The more quarterbacks that can go early, the better for the rest of us back here. Um, That is fascinating. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, but then there are also rumors today that New England is very interested in trading with Chicago for Justin Fields. So then would New England be that team at number three that wants to get out for a team like Minnesota? Because if they have their quarterback in Fields, then they're not going to pick one. And so does that get more interesting with how everything rolls? And would you see New England, let's say hypothetically, they make the trade, they drop back to 11, would they want to then move up and get something at, say, seven and be willing to offer a third-round pick or something else in order to get that? I don't know. New England not drafting in the draft is a tradition unlike any other. It it truly is. We should get Jim Nance to say that. It's it's real, though. They hoard draft picks. They never actually pick any players. It's the craziest thing. Do you think maybe they figured out that's why they are where they are right now? I think there's a really good chance they're regretting some choices Mm -hmm. right now. But, you know, they've got a lot of of new stuff going on, and maybe it'll all turn out fine. But the Patriots not picking anybody? Sure, yeah. That's a movie I've seen. That's going to do it (laughs) for Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith thanking you for joining us for the OTP. Welcome to the big show where the legends go. Everybody.